You guys having fun at least? Such dour faces. It's Absolutely. <laughs> I'm from uh, Texas. This is cold. We haven't seen less than 106 guys, all year. In this film room series, I use Tangent to review my round, my decision making, and try to educate myself and subscribers on how to make better decisions and shoot lower scores. In the previous film room, I shot an opening round 80 to put myself squarely in 20th place. Next to play, we welcome from Murphy, Texas, Dallas Webster. I start on hole number 10, a long par 5 with wind help. Not a lot of trouble off the tee, so the Tangent Caddy recommends to rev driver in the middle of the fairway. I can't use the AI Caddy in tournament play, but it is useful to compare my decisions to the AI Caddy suggestions after the fact. We'll see how I did when I had to choose the targets. And let's just say, we have a lot to learn in this round, and it's going to get wild in this very first hole. The first tee shot is always nerve wracking, so getting this in play was big. Now we can calm the nerves. The second shot was just a layup. It was 180 to cover the right fairway bunker on the right, and with a little bit of wind help, I never really considered it being in play. The green complex looked small, and it's cold, so I'm not ready to hit three wood up there. I was worried about topping it. Draw a little. But the wind knocks this iron out of the air. Okay. I just don't know it yet. Should be a good angle. That way. All right, let's pause here for a minute. I thought I chose a decent target and hit a good shot, but I got an awful result. My ball is suspended in the long fescue above the bunker. We're talking baseball swing. This is a recovery shot. So let's take a minute to go over how you should handle recovery shots. In this case, my instinct is to baseball punch this back into play. Here is my recovery checklist. Question one, what's the best thing that can happen? So I'm going to try to punch this from the fescue. I'm 80 yards from the green. The absolute best result is this trundles up near the green. If I do that, it's going to take me on average around 3.6 shots from here to finish the hole, according to the Tangent app. Basically, bogey's the most likely answer, only a 40% chance to make par. Question two, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, I'm going to show you that in just a second, but for the purpose of the thought exercise, worst case is that I can't advance it out of the heather, and I have a similar recovery shot again. That's a nightmare. In that scenario, it's going to take me roughly 4.8 shots to finish the hole. That brings double into play. In fact, it's almost an 80% chance of making double. Or it could fall down into the bunker, and I have a bunker shot. That'd be a slightly better result. I'd average 4.3 shots to finish from there, mostly making bogey, but double still in play. Question three, do the pros of hitting this shot outweigh the cons of an alternative? All right, if I'm successful at getting in the fairway, I have a chance to make par, but I'm mostly making bogey, but I'm probably advancing to the fairway less than 30% of the time. The remaining 70%, I'm either leaving it in the heather, the bunker, or the rough and I'm assured a bogey at best with a pretty good chance I make double. I'm not liking those chances. Is there another option? In this case, there is. I'm not in the bunker. I could take an unplayable. I could go backwards. Guarantee I get out of trouble and have a relatively simple wedge from the rough. That is bogey at worst. It eliminates double. The name of the game is avoiding big numbers. This seems appealing. I can survive bogeys. So if I'm a caddy, take the unplayable. Avoid disaster and fight another day. But I'm the player. We always feel like we can hit the shot, so let's see what happens. Whiff. A complete whiff. The club went under the ball, the ball fell into the new divot. That's a stroke, and I've failed to advance the ball. Worst case scenario. Alright, so we're gonna take a breath, go back to the checklist, and realize the error in our decision, right? Nope. We're going to step right back in and take another crack at it. Alright, I got to take it unplayable. I can't hit it. This time, I didn't whiff it, but the ball just Which further buried itself into the sidewall I when I hit bunker? it in the forehead. Or I can go further back. Should have just taken the unplayable, idiot. Alright. I swung twice at that? My world is spinning, and luckily I come to my senses and do what I should have done from the beginning. The checklist only works if you're honest with yourself on possible outcomes. It all happened so fast, I didn't even know how many times I swung. In these scenarios, slow down, weigh your options, take deep breaths. I'm clearly frustrated, not what you want on the first hole, 
and as I get over this ball, my head is a whirlwind of thoughts. I finally realize this, and I back off, take a deep breath, focus on the shot. Go. Make a putt. I was super angry in the moment, but I've already let it go. On to the next. Reliving that nightmare won't help me. This round is a great lesson in how to turn around around, deal with adversity, and the value of grinding. I end up playing really well in brutal conditions. Right. I know we said it's cold, but I didn't plan on building a snowman on the first hole. Do you want to build a snowman? But hey, it's better than a nine. The 11th hole is a straightaway par four. A lot of these on the Meadows course, but carefully placed fairway bunkers make the landing areas tighter. Caddy is recommending free wood as there just isn't much room for driver. But coming off a of snowman, I'm seeing a bit of red and super focused on a target. Three wood was never an option. And I rip it into the narrow fairway. Position A. You know, win some, you lose some. All right, let's put a good stroke on it and start uh, start the golf, huh? Easy game. Yeah, nothing to it. Just a P wedge in, green light. Pen is in the middle of the green. Just start stacking up good shots. Swing. Be the number. number. And that's a great one. Nine feet for birdie and a great yeah. bounce back. Oh. Drano. Give her the old, the old 8 3 start. Yeah. <laughs> Triple birdie, yeah. baby. <laughs> Much better than an 8 4. That's right. That's right. That's how you handle adversity. So let's keep stacking up good shots on hole 12. Another straight narrow par 4. Tangent Caddy is telling me to hit less than driver. There just isn't room. It brings rough and trees into play. But I'm still in makeup mode, so I never gave it any thought. Driver. Kick right. Rider. Uh oh, there's OB pretty tight right there. Keep getting right. Oh, still going. Needs to get right though. Yeah, right. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. You're the you're the man, Dallas. You're the man that needs a ride home. That's a ten cup reference from Trey. You need to watch that movie. It's one of my favorites. I'm telling you, I missed going out of bounds by one bounce to the left. You can see the white stake on the left side of the car path. AI Caddy was right. I should have hit three wood. Now, this is a bit of a recovery shot as well. I can't go high. Gotta punch it up and run it on the green. I'm working way too hard with poor club selection, and I'm only three holes in. But I hit a great recovery. 15 feet for birdie. Let's go. Look at that. Yeah, that ball took off too. It's pretty good. That's really good. Another chance to claw back. Oh, wiggle left at the end. But it's still a great par. Hey. The 13th is a first par three, a long one, but with wind and elevation, it's just a six iron. Something like that. I'm not sure how the six iron ran as far as it did, it. but I was left with a long putt. I hit a pretty good lag and made it for par. That's pretty good. A good par. 66 feet. Pretty good. The 14th hole is another narrow par four. Driver is testing the limits of the fairway, so I chose two iron. But I block it oh, near the trees. Just missed the tree. Get left. There we go. I think it rolled enough. I think it did, yeah. Again, I think Caddy telling me to hit driver would have been a better play. There's no OB on this hole. Had way more room than I thought. <clears throat> I've just never played this golf course. Oh, I didn't get all of it. Get left. Get left. Pro tip, if you hit a mediocre shot, stare at the divot. You'll look cool, yes. and people will yes. think you yeah. had a bad lie. Yeah, you'll be able to... Real talk, when I do hit a shot that didn't come out the way I expected, I look at the divot to try oh, to understand if there it. was something I missed, and to understand club turf interaction. That was well not a hard chip to get on the green, but it was short-sided, and after the first hole triple, I probably tried too hard to get this close. Bladed it, compounded wow. mistakes with a two chip. The second chip wasn't super difficult, and seven feet is a great result, but seven footers are hard. Doesn't move left, it's right where I hit it. And I missed this one, double. 
After the initial mistake of missing the green, you have to just make sure you get on the green with your next shot. The 15th is another hole where driver doesn't make a ton of sense. There's bunkers on both sides that shrink the fairway. But I like a challenge, and I just made double. You should never let the previous hole dictate your club on the next, but it did. Luckily, I piped this one, thread the two bunkers, and have just a wedge left right into the teeth of the wind. I come out of it, just clear the bunker in a weird lie, but keep grinding. Good little chip. Easy two footer, good par. The 16th is a mid-length par three. I felt like we had some wind help, but have no idea why I'm hitting an eight iron from 180 plus. Help it wind, help it. That was never enough club. All right, Dallas, watch it, leave the club face. Maybe you're just too positive. <laughs> I have been accused of toxic positivity. It's my superpower. Get mad, get over it, think happy thoughts. I, mean, I like it. Let's go. Okay, died on you. Good shot, though. Even when you fail to get up and down and make a bad bogey. On to the next. Hole 17 is a pretty simple par 5. The hard part is the tee shot, and I stripe it. There you go. All right. I've got an outside chance of running this up on the green with the two hybrid. It's in between clubs, and I hit this okay, but it doesn't get there, leaving a short chip. All right. Now, on these short chips, I have a bad habit of being tentative in tournaments, worried about hitting it too hard. And that go. comes up light. God, dog it, Dallas. Leaves more than you want for birdie. However, I can be a very aggressive putter, and I run this well by. Pretty good combination. We're working hard early, but we're grinding. We're feeling confident over these putts inside six feet, and that really takes the pressure off the lags. But for the sake of my heart, I wouldn't mind a little less stress. The 18th is a dogleg par four, and with the wind whipping off the left, it's playing longer than the number on the scorecard. I have to be careful not to pull this into the water, which means making the hole longer up the right-hand side. Quit. Quit. Okay, you can get a club on it. A conservative tee shot leaves a difficult second straight into the teeth of the wind, and I have to hit an uncomfortable club to try to get there. This hybrid tends to draw a lot. With water left, I predictably bail out right of the green into the rough. No idea. Yeah, I didn't see it bounce at all. I have lots of green to work with, but the wind is whipping that way. Tough hole, eight Sick. feet for par. It's pretty good, Dallas. Thanks. <sighs> How? I'm clearly frustrated making the turn back to one. I've steadied the train after a terrible start, but the scorecard isn't pretty. I need a big back nine if I'm gonna move up this leaderboard, and it starts with a good drive. The bunkers aren't reachable on this dog leg left, so Tangent Caddy suggests ripping a driver, rip. which I Quit. overdraw just a bit into the rough. Very nice. How far did you say? 143. Like the wind all over the place. I got a feeling the scoring's not gonna be great today. Not as great as we thought. I'm starting to piece together that the scoring conditions are tough, and despite being plus five through nine, I'm still in it. Golf is all about continuing to reframe so that you don't lose focus or hope. Unfortunately, after a decent second shot, I three putt. Oh, the turn is late. Settle. This hole was cut on a slope, and it was a tricky comebacker. The hole just got deeper. But it's time to stop digging. Hole two is gonna be a monster, mostly back into the wind, and the same problem as hole 18. It's a tight fairway, but you have to stay away from the water. 
Tangent Caddy is suggesting less than driver, and I agreed hitting a two iron. It's a three shot hole. Just get it in play. I follow that up with another two iron into the wind and get this into the fairway, but still have over 120 yards in. It's a long hole. A good approach gets me on the green. And a simple two putt gets me out of there. You want to think of par fives as scoring holes, but the wind is making it tough. The third is yet another dogleg left with water. Tight fairway, despite tangent caddy suggesting less than driver, I go with the big stick and I chunk tow it down the fairway. Perfect. Call it a fairway <laughs> finder. Makes me nervous with the left. Hey, I didn't say that. Hit the hybrid. Commit to your it's line. On the right side of the green. Commit to your line. All yep. right side of the green. You got that perfect funky tree up there, Damon. It's the right shot, dude. Yep. I can hit it. Unfortunately, that leaves me a long way home and another four hybrid into the wind. Don't be too deep. The wind died. Have I mentioned how uncomfortable I am with this club? Oh, uh, a couple times already? Well, roll so I good. don't like it. I don't know. I got over my doubts and really hit a good one. But with the wind laying down, it's too much club. I'm rewarded with this. Another hanging weird lie. Only in tournaments. I could go all year without having a lie like this. I mean, this one might be one you want me to consider. I mean, where's that going to end up? I don't have any idea. I'm worried I can't get anywhere close to it or... What if you take an unplayable on this one? At least think about it. No, I think I can advance at least to there. It's not as bad as the other one. I'm just more worried about if I get my club anywhere near it and touch the grass, it'll fall. It'll move. Yeah. Maybe I should take less loft so I don't have to chop so much on it. Trey, my caddy, has scar tissue from our first hold this video. There's not a lot of good options here. Did you try that? Did you just have it go behind you? Yeah, Phil <laughs> Mickelson. I'm at least going through the checklist. I don't know what What's the mean, best yeah. that can happen? It can trundle on the green. What's the worst? I could duff this into the bunker. Is there another option? Yes, I could take less loft, which is why I switched clubs. Why do they all not look good? <laughs> there wasn't really anywhere to go with an unplayable that was better than where I was. None of them look like a good option, Trey. I got oh, to see it. Better than an unplayable. Hand me the 56. Sometimes in golf, it feels like there's a little bit of karma. I've been super patient all day and finally get rewarded. Do it. Do it. Yeah, I deserve that. It's only a par, oh, but it's goodness. much needed to keep momentum. <laughs> oh, I missed it. One <laughs> shot at a time. Wow. And come on, that's a chip in, so smash that like and subscribe the button. God. The fourth hole is a par three, downhill with some help. The wind is starting to quiet a bit. After getting burned by a long iron on the par three, I'm a little gun shy, but that's putting. A little safer than I wanted. I'm putting well. Just find the dance floor. Turn left. Good strike. Go, 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 go. Stop. Thank you. Not exciting, but an easy par. Oh, you got the sheep ranch ball marker. I just noticed that. Or the old Mac. ghost tree. The fifth is a reachable par four. We have the wind behind us and it's downhill so it's just a three wood as driver could run through the green and I have no idea what's over there. Oh a nice fat one. Yeah, get away with it. Waited too long. Kick left. Run like you stole something. It comes up a bit short but it's a pretty easy pitch. Peace. Followed by a good putt. And we're back to plus six. I am fighting my tail off. The sixth hole is a straight par four, not long. Tangent caddy suggesting three wood to stay out of the bunker on the right. I decided to hit driver and immediately find oh, that bunker. Dallas. 
Tangent's caddy isn't infallible, but it's hard for me not to look at this round and notice that literally every drive that got into trouble was one where I didn't do what Tangent Caddy would do. Coincidence? I hit a pretty good fairway bunker shot and an easy two putt earns me a par and saves me from the driving mistake. The seventh hole is, you guessed it, a straight narrow par four with a healthy tailwind. This is much easier than the front nine. I pipe one over 300 yards into the fairway. Like it. Kick a little bit left and save Let the fairway. Go. That gives me just a wedge and I hit a pretty good one. And it's a good number. Spin. If only I'd have hit that putt. Short is okay, good par. I remain good at plus par. six and I'm quietly turning this round around. The eighth is a long par three and it's in between clubs. It's gonna be hard to get a five iron there, but I've already whined about my four hybrid enough for you to know that I'm not hitting that. I predictably come up short. Just get there. Pick up. Hit a very pedestrian chip and bail myself out with a potter. On tough days where you gotta grind, you need a putter that cooperates. The 18th is a wider par four, but there's bunkers in the middle of the fairway, making it play narrow. Caddy says two hybrid, and I blast driver right oh, into the bunkers. Why wouldn't I? Mile and a half left of the bunker, you said? Plenty of room left. Rounds like this are why I developed the AI Caddy. Even a good player can get wrapped up in emotion rather than picking logical targets. I've made this hole harder from the bunker and a slightly chunked pitching wedge comes cut. up short. God darn it, cut please. I've got to scramble, again. I've really turned this around and want nothing more than to shoot even on the back to reward the grind. Sit, 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 sit. I'm going to have to make a six footer. I touched the lip. Yeah. Yeah, I want this one, buddy. This would have been an easy round to give up on, but there's beauty in the grind. I'm doing some work here on the back. It's time to uh, reward thyself. Staying present and figuring out how to turn a bad start into a good round will only reward me in the future. Adversity is just around the corner. I stalk this like Tiger and hit another great putt. Good putt. That's a 77 in the cold wind on a tough course where I started with a triple bogey and a whiff. The 77 was the 12th best score on the day and moved me from 20th to 15th. I'm still 13 shots back of the lead, but I'm in my best position that I've ever had through two days of the national championship. Thanks for watching. Smash that like and subscribe for more film room.